I will move to general form of differentiation. So this is general form. If y is equal to x to power n, the y ds is n x to the power n minus 1. So for instance, if we say that y is equal to x to the power 3, here n is 3, then I can say that the y dx is equal to, what this thing means is that this 3 will come down, 3 x raised to power, you now say 3 minus 1. That is 3 x raised to power 2. If I pick another example, let's say I want to differentiate y is equal to x raised to power 5, then I will say that y is equal, the y ds is equal to, the 5 will come down, I will have 5, then I will write s raised to power 5 minus 1. And that is 5 s raised to power 4. Now, let's say I, I, I want to consider something of this nature, 4 s raised to power 4. You know, for this, three, uh, for this 2, we have no numbers here, but there is a number here. So when there is number here, the 4 will still come down. But when the 4 comes down, it will multiply this 4. So that our answer is equal to 16. When the 4 comes out, it will multiply the, any number that is there, which is 16. S raised to power 4 minus 1. Our answer is 16 S raised to power 3. So you observe that the power later reduced by 1, reduced to 4. This one is reduced to 3. This one is reduced to 2. Generally, without even using the formula, I can quickly say that unless I want to differentiate this, I can quickly say that my dy ds is equal to, when this comes down, it will be 15 x raised to power, it will be 4. The 5 will be reduced by 1. That is 4. So that is formula of finding differentiation. If y is equal to square root of x, now, this one, I can't differentiate this one directly, just like this. But if I can express it in terms of x raised to power something, then I can differentiate it directly. So for instance now, I want to differentiate square root of s. To express it in terms of indices like this, I will use indices formula which says this is same thing as s to power half. Then I can quickly say that our dy ds is the half will come down, s raised to power will say half minus 1. This is half s raised to power half minus 1 is minus half and um, this one gives me half s to power minus, minus half is the same thing as 1 over this finally our answer is half s to the power half is square root of s now what I want to bring out here is that if I differentiate square root of s I will have my dy ds is 1 over 2 square root of s. Let's say I want to differentiate 1 over x. 1 over x is not of this form. But when we apply indices, we can write it in that form. This can become x to the power minus 1. Then our dy ds is the minus 1 will come down. This is minus 1. x to the power minus 1 minus 1. As usual from the formula. So this will be minus 1, x to the power minus 2. But x to the power minus 2 is the same thing as 1 over x squared. So what we are now saying is that if I differentiate 1 over s, dy ds is minus 1 over x squared. So which I want you to memorize as a um, formula. Now la let us now consider another question. Find dy ds if y is equal to this. Our dy ds is just um, 5. The 5 will come down, we'll do it one by one. The 5 will come down, that will be 5. Then the power will be reduced by 1, that is 4. Minus, this 4 will multiply this 5 to give me 20. That will be 20, x raised to power. This, this one will come down, that will become 3 now. Plus, this is 1 already. If it comes down, 1 times 3 is um, 3. It's still 3 then the one will reduce to zero so there'll be nothing there again so that is our answer so in that case i can quickly say another example let's say i want to differentiate y is equal to five there's no x here since there's no x here i can write it as y 
x is to power 0 because x is to power 0 is 1. Then if I differentiate this, our answer is you multiply 0 times 5, that is 0 times x raised to power 0 minus 1. But 0 times whatever that is there is 0. So what we are saying is that if I differentiate y, I will get 0. So finally, or generally, I can have this table, y and the y dx. If I differentiate x raised to power n, the value will come down, that n will come down, and we have n minus 1. Another thing that I brought out there, if I differentiate kx, the answer is k. That is, if I differentiate, let's say, 4, 4x, four the answer is 4. 5x, the answer is 5, like that. So k is a number, x is a variable. But our suggestion, now, if I now differentiate that k, I will have 0, just like this. If I differentiate 5, I will get 0. If I differentiate 3, I will get 0, like that. Also, I gave this as well, 1 over, uh, 1 over x. If I differentiate 1 over x, I will have minus 1 over x squared. You should memorize it as a formula. And the last one that I wrote, if I differentiate square root of s, I will have 1 over 2 square root of s. So we have known the basic method of um, differentiation, how we can differentiate polynomial function. Now, for the trigonometric function, I have given you that before. Now, let me remind you again. For the trigonometric function, I have given this before. Y dy dx. If I differentiate sin s, I will get cos s. If I differentiate cos s, I will get minus sin s. If I differentiate tan s, I will get sec square s. If I differentiate sec s, I will get sec s tan s. If I make cortex, I'll get minus cos square like that. That is for trigonometric function. There's no any workings here. I've done all this when we are dealing with um, differentiation from the first principle. Now, I will now move to differentiation of logarithm and exponential function. Starting from exponential fun function. Also, I don't need to even stress myself there. Let me add one more. This is exponential s. If I differentiate exponential s, I'll get exponential s so we should take note of uh, of this that if i differentiate exponential s i'll get exponential s so the next one is logarithm function so that this logarithm function we said logarithm function is of the form this form natural logarithm this is ln we, we produce it as lin and we pronounce it as lin l i n so that is the pronunciation of this lin function a function certain expression that is the meaning of this function f of x or we can write it as l o g f of x so if you write it like this or like we call this logarithm function this lin simply means log into base of exponential now how do we differentiate this when we see logarithm now this is the differentiation if y is equal to lin f of x the y ds is equal to f prime of s over f of s what does f prime means this one means differentiation this one this version of f of x that is if you ask to differentiate lin of a function it will be differentiation of that function over that function for instance if i take example let's say i have a y is equal to lin sin x if i want to find the y ds my that function is sin s but because i have lin here if i want to differentiate it i'll follow the formula it will be differentiation of this function over this function so if i differentiate this function i will have um cos s if i differentiate sin s that's it here yeah? i'll have cos s over the function itself over sin s that's how to differentiate logarithm function you see differentiation of that function over that function so I want to say, and cos s over sin s simply means cot s. Let's say I have a um, lin s cube minus 4, for instance. If I want to differentiate this, I'll first differentiate this function. And if I differentiate s cube, I'll have 3s squared. If I differentiate 4, uh, that will be 0. It's a constant divided by that function itself this is a function itself also let's say i want to differentiate lin exponential x if i differentiate this 
it will be dimension of this over this. And if I differentiate this, I will have exponential s. Because from this is I said if I differentiate exponential s, I will get exponential s. Then we say over after I've differentiated it, I will say over the function again. So exponential s cancel exponential s, our answer is one. So that means if I differentiate lean exponential s, I will get um, one. The loss of logarithm that will be useful under this are these three. If you have that log a raised to power n, it's the same thing as n log a, that is, you bring back this. If you have log a b, it's the same thing as log a plus log b. If you have log a over b, it will be log a minus log b. So that those are the formulas that will be useful for us here. For instance, let's say we want to consider, we want to, we want to differentiate this y is equal to lean s cube sin s for instance so this one is our a this is our b this is lean a b so in this case i can't differentiate this directly but if i apply love that logarithm which says this multiplication will become addition i cannot write it as lean s cube plus lean sin x from this place now, I can find the y ds. And how do we find the y ds? I will differentiate this function. If I differentiate this function, this is s cube. It will give me 3 s squared over that function itself. Plus, if I differentiate sin s, I will have cos x over sin x itself. From this place now, s squared cancel s cube we have 3 over s plus if i differentiate uh, this one cos over sine simply means cut s so that is the final answer to this let's assume that we are giving this y is equal to lin x this one is very simple the y ds is just um, differentiation of x which is 1 then over x itself so, I want you to take note of this as formula. That is, if, if I differentiate linear, I will have 1 over s. That should always ring in your brain. Also, let's consider this question. Let's say I want to differentiate lean cos 50s, cos raised to power 5s. Normally, we may not be able to differentiate this because of this power here. We can only differentiate lean cos s easily. So we can't differentiate lean cos fifth s easily. But if you apply law of logarithm, this law of logarithm that the power can go to the back, then I can now say that this thing can be written as 5 lean cos x. So that my dy ds will be, the 5 is constant, this 5 is constant, I will not differentiate this. The, uh, I will differentiate lean cos s. And how do we differentiate lean cos s? I'll differentiate cos s over cos s. If I differentiate cos s, I'll have minus sin s from the table that I gave you. You can rewind to that over the formula, that over the function. I'll differentiate this over this again. Finally, our answer is minus 5. Sin over cos simply means tan s. So that means if I differentiate lean cos raised to power 5s, I will get this one. Now, let's take another example. Move to techniques of differentiation. The first one is chain rule. The chain rule says that if y is equal to f of u and u is equal to g of s, then the y ds is equal to the y du times the u ds. We have been considering a direct, uh, we have been considering a direct question. But now, when we have chain rule, we use this formula. The question now is that when do we know that we have we are going to use chain rule? We use chain rule when we we are given this. We use chain rule when we are given function of a function. This is what we call function of a function. That is when we are given function and the function is having a certain power. Or if a function is having another function inside it, we apply what we call chain rule. Now let's consider the following cases. If you are case one, if you are given a function, whereby the function is having power, we use uh, what we call chain rule. 
Now let's consider examples under this um, case. Example. Let's find the ideas in the following. This is our example one. We take it one by one. The first one, I want to have y equal to s cubed minus 4s raised to the power 5. How do you differentiate this? Now, this function that is having expression of x, you say that let y be, let u, you start by saying let u be that function. That will be s cubed minus 4s. Therefore, we should know that our y, since you have said that let this one be u, then your y will be equal to u raised to power 5. After you have done this, you now differentiate the two sides. You write this one as the u dx. You write this one as dy du. The u dx means I should differentiate this. If I differentiate this, I will have 3s squared minus. If I differentiate 4s, I will have 4. If I differentiate the, this 5, it comes down. It will be 5u raised to the power 4. Then our dy dx will now be equal to. This is a formula dy du times du ds. That is dy du times du dx. So our dy du is this 5u raised to the power 4 times these are du ds 3s squared minus 4. So what we only need to do is we bring back what u means. This is our u. So instead of this u, I will write what u means before raised to the power 4 times this one 3s squared minus 4 so that is the answer to the first one now let's move to the second one the second one is um, y equal to cos s to the power 5 this one too can be written as cos s everything raised to the power 5 so this expression of x i will say that let u be that cos x then our y will be u raised to power 5. Then as usual, we differentiate the u dx. This one, the y du. If I differentiate this cos s, I will have minus sin s. If I differentiate this one, I will have 5 u raised to power 4. Then our dy, our dy ds is dy du times the u ds. So our, this is our dy du. This is our du ds. If you multiply the two together, I'm going to have minus 5 sin s and u raised to the power 5. But we have known our u to be cos s. So instead of this u raised to the power 4, I, since u is cos, I will just put the cos s there instead of that u. So this is our final answer. The third one is um, y is equal to sine squared x. So And that this one too will become sin s all squared. So that one is left as an assignment. Your final answer to this should be 2 sin s cos s, which is same thing as cos 2s. Uh, this is, uh, sorry, the same thing as um, sin 2s. And the next one, which is our d, root of sin s. As usual, we say let u be the expression of s, which is um, sin s. Then our y will be square root of u, Abby, because this is u already. Then y will be equal to square root of u, because we have said let this be u. Then from that place, the u dx, this one, dy du. The u dx, if you differentiate sign, I will be able to have cos x. The y du, if I differentiate square root of u, I've given you this. I'm going to have 1 over 2 square root of u. I said you should memorize it. From this place, our dy ds equal to, I don't need to write out the formula again. This is the formula again. dy du times du ds. That is to just multiply the two together. That is cos s times 1 over 2 root u. Now, our answer is cos s divided by 2 root our u is sin s, so I'll just bring it back. So that is the answer. That means if I differentiate this. And the last one, which is e, you are asked to differentiate square root of s square plus 4. So you do the same. It's just the same thing as this. It's the same thing as so that one is left as an exercise. 
Uh, if I want to consider another example there, let's say I want to differentiate lin squared x. Lin squared s is same thing as lin s all squared. I will just say let u be lin x. Then y is equal to u squared. If I differentiate this, the u ds, the y du. If I do any lin x, I've given you that. I'm going to have 1 over x. If I differentiate this, I'm going to have 2u. Finally, our dy dx is equal to dy du. Just multiply dy du times du ds. That is 2u times 1 over s. This is 2u. Our u is lin x. That is 2 lin x divided by x. That's our answer. If I consider another example, let's say y is equal to exponential cos x. You can see it's still power here. So we say let u be cos x. Then y is equal to exponential u because y is equal to exponential. We are writing this back. We have said let this be u. From that place, the u ds will be equal to. If I differentiate this, I will have minus sin s, dy du. If I differentiate this, I will still have exponential u. That's what I'm going to have. Therefore, our dy dx is equal to this times this dy du times the u ds. That is minus sin s times exponential u. Finally, our answer is minus sin s exponential. Our u is um, cos x. So that is the answer to it. One case of the chain rule is when the function is carrying another function. I've given you an, an example here. Exponential is carrying causes, and we have seen answer. Another example, let's say you are giving this. Let's say I'm having y is equal to sine s squared plus 3. Now, as usual, you say let u be s squared plus 3. Then our y will be equal to sine u because you have said let u be this. So this one, as usual, the u, the s, the y, the u. If I differentiate this, I'm going to have 2x. If I differentiate this, I'm going to have 0. But if I differentiate sine u, I'm going to have cos u. Therefore, our dy ds is dy du times the u ds. That is. 2s cos u, which is 2s cos, we have known our u to be s squared plus 3. Example, another example, let's say we want to differentiate y is equal to sine cos x. Sine is carrying cos x. Your aim is just to express this expression of s in terms of u you say that let u be that expression of s which is cos s definitely our y is what sign u then as usual the u ds this one the y the u if i differentiate cos s i have minus sin s if i differentiate this i have cos u then our dy ds is equal to dy du times du ds that is minus sin s times cos u that is minus sin s cos we have known our u our u is cos s so it will be cos cos x so that is our answer to the question now all these questions all these questions might come out in another technique but are we going to be saying that let you be this let this be this now let's give you a shortcut to all this what cut is this let's assume that you are giving something of this nature s cube minus 4 raised to power 5 this is shame rule because a function is carrying 5 the shortcut is this just write the y ds directly our dy, if I want to differentiate this, our dy ds is, you first differentiate this in, as if you are differentiating something raised to power 5. And you know that if I differentiate 
something raised to the power 5, it will give me 5, that thing raised to the power 4. You know, that's the first thing. I will not say that times, you not differentiate that thing that you are using. If I differentiate this, what, what am I going to have? I'm going to S cube. I'm going to have 3S squared minus 0. If I differentiate 4, I will have 0. So finally, the answer is um, 15S squared into S cube minus 4 raised to power 4. Let's say I want to differentiate y is equal to sine x s sine square s. Our dy ds is differentiate this thing as if you are differentiating something square. And if you do something square, you know this thing can be written as sine s all squared. Differentiate as if you are differentiating s square. You know if you are differentiating s square, it will give you two x. Now if I differentiating this thing square, it will give you two the thing. That is 2x, 2 the same thing. Times, you not differentiate what is inside, which is uh, if I divide this thing, it will give me cos s. So the answer is 2 sin s cos s. And by trig identity that I've given before, this thing will give me sin 2x. Now, let's assume that I want to differentiate square root of cos s. Now, how do you differentiate this? I'll just say that the y ds is. You remember I told you if you differentiate square root of x, you are going to have 1 over 2 square root of x. So that means if you want to differentiate square root of anything, it will give you 1 over 2 square root of that thing that is there. Then you multiply it by the differentiation of that thing. If I differentiate this, I will have minus sin s. So that my final answer is equal to minus sin s over 2 root cos s. So that is my answer. Let's say I want to differentiate exponential sine s, for instance. I will just say that the y ds is equal to, I will differentiate the function, the function itself. If I differentiate this function, I will have, um, if I, okay, different, you are looking at exponential here. We know that if you differentiate exponential anything, it will give you exponential that thing. That means if I differentiate exponential sine s, it will still give me exponential sine s. Nothing will change. Then you say that times, you differentiate the sine s itself, which is um, cos s. So this is our final answer. So that is that about Shane rule. Now let's give another example. I want to differentiate cos 2s. The y ds is, if you want to differentiate this, for, differentiate as if you are differentiating cos. If you differentiate cos anything, it will give you minus sine that thing. Then we say that times you that differentiate that thing itself. That is two s. If you do two s, you have two. So that my final answer is minus two sine two s. Also, I can say that if I want to differentiate tan three s plus two, for instance, the y ds is. I would do as if I want to differentiate tan. If I differentiate tan s, I will have sec square whatever i've given you the formula you can rewind and check it now i'll say that times i will not differentiate what is inside if i divide three yes i'm going to have three if i divide two i'm going to have zero so that my answer is three sec squared three plus two so that is that so from that place i can bring another differentiation out as formula so the formulas are this. Once again, if I differentiate sine ks, I will have k sine cos ks. If I differentiate cos, all these k, they are numbers, they are constant. So that is, I have brought k out, then I will have sine ks. So these are what we call chain rule. Now we now move to another technique. The second technique is what we call product rule. So product rule from the word product means multiplication. If two functions are in terms of multiplication, that is if you have u times v, the y ds is u the v ds plus v the u ds. That is what this thing means is that when you are giving u and v multiplication, you take u, you differentiate v, plus you take v, you differentiate u. That is what we call product, product rule. Now, let's take example. 
28 s cube s raised to the power 4 sine s so these are our u these are v's in product form in that case i will say that my u is s raised to the power 4 and my v is sine x as usual i will say that i will write the u dx and i will write the v ds that is how i differentiate if i differentiate this i will have um, 4 s cube if I differentiate this, I will have um, cos x. Now, using the formula, u dv ds plus v du ds, this is it. u dv ds, v du ds, that is just cross multiply. So that my dy ds equal to, using the formula, u times dv ds. I will cross multiply, that is s is power 4 cos s plus this one these two four s is super three sine s just cross multiply then you are there also let's say you have another one let's say we have um sine x lean sine x for instance this is our u this is our v so our u is sine s and our v is ln sine x. Then I'll differentiate the u dx. If I differentiate the u dx, if I differentiate this, I will have um, cos x. The v dx. If I differentiate this, ln of s. If you can still remember, I said you differentiate the function over the function. If I differentiate this function, I will have cos s over sine s which is same thing as cot s there was now our answer our dy dx will now be u dv ds plus v du ds so we apply it here you just cross multiply this is it u dv ds v du ds so our answer is uh, sine s sine s times cos s over sine s that is this times this plus v du ds this two cos s ln sine x from this way you see that sine s cancel sine s what we have left is cos s plus cos s ln sine s so that is the answer to this question now let's consider another example see that exponential s tan x so our u is exponential s, our v is tan x. Then the u ds is, if I differentiate exponential s, I will have exponential s. The v dx, if I differentiate tan s, I'm going to have sec squared x. Once again, let me show you. These are the formulas again. You can memorize it. Again, pause it and memorize it. Also, our answer will be u dv ds plus v du ds. u dv dx, that is product two, plus v du ds. So from that place, just cross multiply as I've said. Our dy dx will now be this times this. Exponential s sec square s plus this times this. Exponential s tan x. So that is our answer to the differentiation. Now, let's now consider more advanced one. Let's assume that we have um, exponential s sine, s sine s into cos 2x. For instance, now our u is this, our v is this. Our u is exponential sine s, our v is cos 2s. You will observe and agree with me that this is chain rule, this is chain rule. It cannot be differentiated directly. You have to apply the method that I said. How do you differentiate this? I know that if I differentiate exponential anything, it will give me exponential anything back. But I told you, you see that times differentiation of that anything, which is sine s, I'll get cos s. Also, the v dx. If I differentiate cos anything, I will have minus sine anything. Then times... You differentiate that thing that is there, which is 2. So that is a um, shingle differentiation.
Therefore, our dy ds is equal to this times this, these two. So that is minus 2 sine 2s, these two. Exponential sine s plus v du ds, this times this. That is um, cos s, cos 2s, exponential sine s. So that is the solution to this. Let's consider another one. This is another one. Y is equal to s cubed into this raised to the power 5. So this is our u, this is our v. I will say that my u is s cubed and um, my v is s squared plus 1 raised to the power 5. This one is easy, it's not hard. If I differentiate s cubed, I will have 3 s squared. But this one is chain rule. To differentiate this, I will do it as if I am differentiating something raised to the power 5. And you know that if you differentiate anything raised to the power 5, it will give you 5 x to the power 4. So this one will give me 5 this raised to the power 4. Then as usual, you say times, you not differentiate what is inside. What is inside it? If I differentiate that x square, I'll give me it will give me 2x. If I differentiate 1, it will give me 0. That one is gone. Then our dy dx will now be this times this. I'll differentiate this two. That will be you know normally this one. If I even finish it, it will give me 10x x square plus 1 raised to the power 4. Then let's multiply it by this. This two. That will give me s cube into 10 into s square plus 1 raised to the power 4 that is um, this times this plus v du ds 3s squared into s square plus 1 raised to the power 5 so finally our answer will be equal to 10 s raised to the power 4 into s square plus 1 raised to the power 4 plus 3 s square you can factorize and finish it too so that will be your own assignment you can still factorize some we have some things that are common here that you can factorize now let's consider another one let's say we want to we want to differentiate s raised to power 3 square root of s cube plus 1. For instance, our u is this, our v is this. Then, the y ds is equal to okay, our u, let's write our u out, and let's write our v out. Then, the u dx, if I differentiate this, I will have 3s squared. The v dx, now, if I differentiate this, this is square root. If I, if you still remember, if I differentiate square root of anything, it will give you 1 over 2 square root of that thing. Then you need to multiply by differentiation of the thing itself. If I differentiate that s square, s cube, I will have 3s squared. If I differentiate this one, I will have 0. So that my dy ds will be equal to u divided ds this times this. So that will become 3s to the power 5 because this is s cubed times s squared. Then it's 3 there over 2 square root of s cubed plus 1 plus v du ds. This 2. 3s squared square root of s cubed plus 1. So that is our final answer. So you can practice this. Let's say you are giving s is to power 4 cos 3s square root of that now let's practice it now so we have some questions here under shingle pause it study those questions Study those questions. This one is for 
product rule study them these are the questions the solutions the solutions for b solutions for c continuation of solution for c is another question that is for product two so the next one is quotient two this is quotient two that one is talking about division if you have u over v dy ds is equal to v du ds minus u dv ds over v squared so the quotient rule is talking about when you have division now let's take example let's assume that you have this example why is it what to differentiate y is equal to s cube over tan x so what we should know is that um, our u the one on top is u the one down is our v so as usual we differentiate as usual if i differentiate this i will have 3s squared if i differentiate this one i will have um, sec square s then our dy ds is v du ds this is it you cross multiply v v du ds that is 3s square tan x minus u dv ds this one u dv ds s cube sec square s over v square what's our v our v is tan x so but square is there so i will have tan square s so that is the final answer to this let's assume that we want to differentiate y is equal to sin s over sec s as usual our u will be sin s and our v will be sec s then we differentiate the u ds if i differentiate this i will have um, cos s and then um, the v dx if i differentiate sec s i will have sec s tan s you can check the table again then our dy ds is equal to v du ds cos s sec s minus u dv ds sin s sec s tan x over v square our v square is um, sec s but square is there it will become sec square s but it doesn't end like this we can continue our dy dx can be equal to sec and cos they are inverse of each other so they will cancel each other or let's write it like this cos so if i write it like this this is our sec this is our sign this is our sec our tan is sine over cos so from this we sec cos cancels cos we have one minus nothing is cancelled but we have two sine on top and two cos are down that will become tan square hertz over sec squared x so that's our final answer to the question now let's now consider this y is equal to square root of s squared plus one over s minus one now this is chain rule and um, quotient rule at the same time now how do we differentiate this i will say that um dy dx is equal to before that let me consider this thing let me see that our let u be s squared plus 1 over s minus 1 and let v be square root of u and let's sorry let y be square root of because if you let this be u definitely your y will be square root of u from that place i will differentiate the y dx and how do you differentiate the sorry the u ds how do you differentiate this using quotient rule i'll take this i'll use the formula the formula is um, v du dx minus u dv dx over v square 
V D U D. These are V. D U D S means I should differentiate this. This is U. This is V. I should differentiate this. If I differentiate this, I will have two x minus U D V D S. This is our U. If I differentiate this, I will have one over v square what's our v square these are v then all squared also here i will have the y du if i differentiate the y du i'll get square root of u simply means one over two square root of u and if i expand this what i'm going to have will be 2s squared minus 2s this one will be minus s squared minus one this is over s minus 1 square. Now, our dy dx will now be the formula dy du times du dx. That is, we multiply these two together. So that my answer will be equal to, this is s squared minus 2s minus 1. If I simplify this, times 1 over 2 square root of this 1 over 2 square root of u our u is this s square plus 1 over s minus 1 so this is our final answer to this question if there are more questions from the textbook you practice them study and practice them so this is another question the solution is here. The solution is here. It's a test produced by me. So I'm going to introduce it to you when we resume. You buy the test book for your personal reading. Can you see? This is another question. And this is the solution to it. This is another question here. Something like what we just solved now. And this is the solution to it. This is another question. And the solution to it. The name of the book, Essential Calculus, by me. So I produce. So this is my name here. Essential Calculus recommended. So take care to the next class. Till we meet in the next class.